You are now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, Dr. Taylor covers controlling your blood sugar and insulin. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. All right, welcome to The Real Health Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, owner and operator of Align Utah uh, here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And we are a, you know, whole body wellness clinic, but we really focus on on three main areas that control your overall health. And, And those are looking at your nutrition, huge, huge part of your overall health. Most people know that today. Big, big part, big part of what we're going to be talking about today. Then we also look at toxicity and detoxification. That is huge, especially in today's society, in today's world, we're overloaded with toxins. And you can go back and you can listen to past podcast episodes about that. Learn about your personal care products. Learn about the toxins that are in your food supply that are leading to leaky gut, that are leading to autoimmune diseases, that are leading to obesity and metabolic syndrome like we're going to talk about today. Uh, But a huge part, you know, tied together with nutrition is toxicity and the ability to detox. The third component in our practice is a massively important component. It is the, you know, best healing modality on the planet, in my opinion, and that is chiropractic. Um, and to somebody that's not experienced the, the wonders of chiropractic, they might be shocked by that. But to those who have experienced it, you know, they tend to, to understand it and know that. And, and when you think about it, your health really comes down to your body's ability to really perceive its environment, perception, perceive its environment, and then adapt. You know, for example, if you go outside and it's hot out today, your body has to perceive that heat, and then it has mechanisms to cool it down. It's got to start sweating, other things like that, that are going to cool your body down. So perception and adaptation. On the other end of the spectrum, you walk out and it's freezing, you're going to start shivering. You're going to have different mechanisms there that are going to speed your body up to heat it up more to try to keep it close to that 98.6. And, and that's the most easy you know, analogy there. But if you think about it, all the perception and adaptation in the body is literally controlled by and through the nervous system. The peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system has to control that perception. It has to perceive that environment, send those signals to the brain and to the spinal cord so that they can adapt and send signals back to control all those adaptation mechanisms. That is, you know, at the same time, one of the most simple concepts while at the same time being one of the most complex concepts when you really get into it. But that's chiropractic and that's the nervous system. So that is what we do in our office. Combine those three together. Today, what I want to talk about is, you know, very possibly the most important topic when it comes to your overall health. And and I feel like I say that about a lot of things, but so many of them are are so important. You know, we say that about inflammation. Uh, We say that about cellular health. We say that about so many different things about exercise and lots of different things. But, you know, this one really, really is a a really important thing. And that's managing and controlling your blood sugar. And this is not the first time that we've talked about sugar, but a lot of times we talk about dietary sugar. Where is it coming from? What can I avoid? Because the reality is, you know, if if you want to manage your blood sugar, you just have to start there. You don't have to start by, you know, pricking your finger 10 times a day like I've been doing, like I'm going to talk about, and actually literally measuring your blood sugar. Just avoid the sugars. You know, we're, I'm going to give you the top five tips to manage your blood sugar. And, you know, spoiler alert, that's number one is just avoid any of the added sugars and just watch out for those. Learn those. So we're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about the foods. But I really want to talk about, you know, blood sugar from a metabolic standpoint, blood sugar and insulin. Okay, so blood sugar and insulin. Most people have heard of those. Most people have some level of understanding, and that might be a stretch even, but, you know, some level of understanding. It's probably the most common 
hormone, you know, other than maybe estrogen or testosterone, but, you know, insulin is the most common and most well-known hormone. One of the reasons because diabetes is so massively widespread, you know, it's huge. And that's an obvious one that sugar causes. One of the things that we like to point out is that, you know, it literally used to be called diagnostically adult onset diabetes. Okay, that's type 2 diabetes, which it's now called type 2 diabetes instead of type 1 or instead of adult onset because it's onsetting so much earlier. We're finding that kids, our kids, are beginning to show signs of insulin resistance in high blood sugar. Okay, so this is massively, massively important. So I, I want to explain this in very simple, you know, layperson's terms here, what, what blood sugar is and what insulin is. So blood sugar is, you know, what it says it is, sugar in the blood. So let's start with this. You eat a food. Okay, let's say it's a drink of orange juice. You wake up in the morning, you take a drink of orange juice. That orange juice is going to be absorbed right into your blood, there's sugar in that orange juice, there's fructose, a lot of carbs are converted to glucose, which is what we're measuring, blood glucose. But anyway, your blood sugar rises, okay, because you just drank that. So insulin takes your blood sugar, gets it out of the blood, and takes it to the cells. Too much blood sugar is toxic, it will kill you. That's why insulin resistance is so dangerous and diabetes is so dangerous. So in layperson's terms, how I would describe this is that insulin is like the mailman or the postal service in general. So you, let's say, take a package of orange juice to the mailbox, okay, which is your mouth. You put that package into the mailbox. Now, that's not your final destination, right? Maybe you're sending a package to your friend across the country and you need that package to get there. You need that package to get there, but it's not your responsibility. They're across the country. So you put it in the mailbox. Now, the mailman, the post service, is their job is to come take that box, get it to your friend. And, and if that concept makes sense, then you now understand blood sugar. Now, we all know probably what it feels like when a package gets lost in the mail. Now, if your package is just consistently kept getting lost in the mail, that, that's going to be a, a big, big problem. You know, you're spending money, your things aren't getting through. You know, say your friend was really relying on this package. It's, you know, a life or death or a very important situation. Well, that's exactly what's happening. Your cells are waiting for this blood sugar. They're waiting for the sugar to get out of the blood so it can be stored. Sometimes that's turned into fat and different things, but it's got to get out of the blood. Okay, and so if your insulin isn't doing a good job of taking your blood sugar and getting it out of the blood and into the cells, that's what can be called insulin resistance. Your body is inefficient at lowering this blood sugar. And it's kind of like, you know, to say you have a, a local post service and maybe they can handle 100 packages a day. Okay, and they're really good. And then a new company comes into town and they start giving them a thousand packages a day. What's going to happen really quickly is that post service is going to get really quickly overloaded. You know, think about our post service during the, during the holidays. You know, they'll hire uh, FedEx and UPS to help with the overload because they can't handle it. And when you keep feeding your body sugar, you keep feeding it. Uh, fruits, you keep feeding, you know, just high sugar, you know, candies, juices, things like that. Then we're going to talk about what, what foods are high in sugar, but you keep doing that over and over and over and over, and your insulin gets less efficient, and you become what's called insulin resistant. And insulin resistance is the cause of diabetes, okay? That literally is the definition of diabetes, but it is also the cause of obesity, Insulin is the fat storage hormone. So when your body has to produce a ton of insulin because you're giving it so much blood sugar, eventually it causes weight gain and obesity and other metabolic syndromes that are, uh, that are you know, related to weight gain, like high cholesterol, high triglycerides, high blood pressure, 
all those things that come along with what's called metabolic syndrome. It affects leptin, which is the fat, you know, affects your body's ability to burn fat. A fat burning hormone gets burned out when insulin resistance sets in, leptin resistance sets in. It is also the cause of Alzheimer's or dementia or brain, you know, cognitive loss, which is, you know, a, a massively, you know, we're already talking about, we've already hit on heart disease. Now we're talking, and we hit on diabetes. And now we're talking about Alzheimer's and, and, and uh, dementia, right? And so right away, we're talking about the three biggest, and in a second, we're going to talk about cancer, the four biggest diseases, the four biggest killers, the four things that everybody wants to avoid and eliminate and does not want to end up with are all caused by sugar. That's why I say it's the most important thing that you can do for your health is learn to control your blood sugar and your insulin. So Alzheimer's or dementia, they're actually calling, you know, Alzheimer's type three diabetes now because they're showing that it has so much to do with insulin and glucose metabolism. And when there's too much glucose, they've even measured it, you know, by giving you one dose of too much glucose, you can answer fewer questions on, on cognitive exams. You lose ability to recall things. Your brain gets foggy when your blood sugar is not well controlled. And that's early, early signs of Alzheimer's or dementia. Cancer is the next one. You know, that's been known for almost 100 years now that cancer cells have more receptors for sugar than they do uh, than, than normal cells do. And cancer literally feeds on sugar. And, and you know, this is not controversial and it's well known because when if you get diagnosed with a tumor many tumors many types of cancer they're going to take you in for a pet scan many people have heard of that when you take a pet scan you drink radioactive sugar before your scan that sugar goes right to the tumor because the tumor literally feeds on sugar it's like pouring gas on a fire and so when that radioactive sugar goes to the tumor then they do a scan of your body and it can pick up where that tumor is so sugar you know fuels cancer and then the, the last one is it, inf it fuels all other inflammatory diseases so you know if diabetes obesity uh, metabolic syndrome alzheimer's or dementia cancer, heart disease weren't enough. It fuels all the other inflammatory diseases, which is basically everything that you weren't born with genetically, you know, all other diseases, autoimmune conditions, leaky gut. Uh, we're talking arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, falling under the autoimmune category. And, and so we're talking inflammation and we're not talking about a sore shoulder or a sore ankle or a sore knee. We are talking about cellular inflammation. And, and that's the root of, of all of this is cellular inflammation. The cells become inflamed, the insulin receptors become burned out, and they just don't hear insulin the same way that they used to. The postal service, not as efficient as it used to. Packages are getting lost. Things are getting messed up. Metabolism is getting messed up. Diseases are forming. Okay, and what they're estimating today is that 85% of Americans are insulin and or leptin resistant. So that, that's crazy. It's massively, massively important. I'm sure that after that, we can all agree. I mean, it's literally causing every disease. It's the number one thing that a person can do. Get off your butt and move and watch your blood sugar. So what does that look like, you know, when you go and get that measured, what, what's a, a good blood sugar level? Uh, you know, fasting, that's why they usually test it, you know, in the morning, right when you wake up. Anything that's normal is below 100. Um, so, you know, 99 or below is normal. 100 to 125, that's pre, pre-diabetic. Okay, that's insulin resistant pre-diabetic or diabetic is 125 or above, 126 or above. Um, they can also do oral, you know, glucose tolerance tests, which they'll, you know, you take uh, glucose and then they measure it right afterward. Or they'll look at HbA1c, hemoglobin A1c, um, which is a, you know, a huge marker really that they, that they look at for diagnosing diabetes. But you have to look at this whole picture. I, I, I've seen in my clinic very high A1c numbers with very low blood glucose levels and very low insulin resistance levels. So that's another marker that can be measured that, you know, if you go in for your physical, you're, you're probably not honestly going to get um, along with HbA1c and, and blood 
blood glucose, but insulin resistance is a, a, another one. So that, those are the numbers that you want to see. Your numbers are going to be a little bit higher when you are fasting in the morning because your cortisol levels are high. And, and so that can be altered. You know, when we've talked about this in the past, that's a stress hormone. That's your sleep cycles. That's your adrenals. That's weight gain around the midsection. That's women weight gain and the underarms uh, weight gain where you don't want it and where it's really, really hard to, to lose it no matter how many arm exercises you do, you still have that little bit right there or that little bit right under your belly button or, you know, men just like the, the spare tire around your belly, the beer belly. Uh, that's cortisol and that's elevated in the morning, which, which elevates blood sugar. But that's what you want to see. You know, you can see this, you know, every, every six months at your physical or whatever, or it's really, really easy to measure yourself. And that's what I've been experimenting with lately. And it's been really, really cool. It's really eye opening. Um, you, you get a meter online. You know, I got my meter um, on Amazon. And that's where I would suggest the meter that there's a lot of them out there. Okay. And, uh, but th I would suggest doing exactly, you know, what I've done, because I, I just took a lot of other people's suggestions. And, and so Dr. Mercola, Dr. Pompa, you know, a lot of other uh, people out there, they recommend the precision extra. Okay, so on Amazon, it is $25. 25 bucks, the precision extra meter. One of the reasons that I got this is because it not only measures blood glucose, but it measures ketones. Okay, that's a whole nother episode. But when your blood glucose is, stays low enough, when your body's in fat burning mode rather than sugar burning mode, your body produces what's called ketones. So that's a really important thing to me to measure my ketones. But I've been measuring blood sugar a lot lately. So, in the, uh, you know, just do a finger prick. I measure it throughout the day. Uh, and it's really quick and easy. Now, this is the Precision Extra. You can get the strips, Precision Extra strips on Amazon as well. They're, they're fairly expensive. The ketone strips are more expensive, but you know, it is worth it to look for the best deal. And, and these strips are now being sold at Walmart under the name, the, the brand is the Ultima Rely On, R-E-L-I, capital O-N. Okay, so it's a Walmart brand of diabetic blood glucose strips that work with the Precision Extra. So anyway, I just picked up a pack of, you know, 50 strips there the other day for 30 bucks, which is, you know, not bad compared to the ketone strips. So I use the blood sugar strips a lot more often than I use the ketone strips to get, you know, just a picture, you know, before before I drink a shake, after I drink a shake, before I work out, after I work out. I'm trying to get a really good picture of this, but it's really easy to measure. So that's what you want to look at is measure your blood sugar, take a look at it. But now what I want to give you are the top five tips to measuring or excuse me to, to managing your blood sugar and your insulin response. You know, some of these you've heard us talk about before me talk about before in the podcast, but top five tips, top five most important things anybody can do to manage their blood sugar, which once again is the most important thing that you can do in your life. So here we go. Number one is avoid any added sugars. Okay, that's a that's a must uh, for anything. You know, and, and what I'd say too is, you know, we're talking about these specific numbers. Ninety percent of the population they need to start with, you know, one through three of these top five. Uh, avoid any added sugars. That's the first thing is, you know, just flip over your nutrition label, flip over your label, and just look at it. And look at the total carbs, the fiber, the sugars, and most importantly, I would say look at the ingredients list. What they have shown is that, you know, uh, carbs are not carbs are not carbs. Sugars are not sugars are not sugars like we once thought. You know, they've shown that high fructose corn syrup can actually cause glycation, which is basically aging cause it faster. Uh, and, and so sugar, you know, is the number one thing that leads to aging. It leads to wrinkles in your skin. It leads to disc degeneration in your spine. It leads to arthritis through a process called glycation. Okay. And fructose and especially high fructose corn syrup speeds that up. Okay. They're called, they're literally called ages, A-G-E, advanced glycation end products, which are sped up by fructose and by sugar. So you have to avoid any added sugar. Absolutely no high fructose corn syrup, genetically modified from corn, high fructose corn syrup. Uh, it's like rocket fuel for aging. 
you know, so if, if you want to speed up your aging machine, <laughs> uh, pour that in it and, and you'll speed it right up. You'll, yeah, you'll, you'll get there in a hurry. Um, so avoid any added sugars. Look at your added sugars. You know, that's step one, uh, really a beginner step, but start there. Number two, start looking at and limiting or eliminating your fruit intake and eliminating fruit juices. Okay, that's a, that's a huge one, especially when we look at our kids because we think, oh my gosh, this juicy juice says 100% fruit juice, not from concentrate, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it, it, it's grapes, they're healthy for my kids. It, it's better than Dr. Pepper. And, and it is probably, but it might not be. It, it, they're really, really high in sugar. It's just basically pure sugar. One of my favorite quotes is from Dr. Robert Lustig. He's a pediatric endocrinologist, really, really uh, top researcher on, on, you know, childhood diabetes, insulin response, glycemic index, you know, things like that. And what he said is, he said, when God put the poison on the earth, okay, he's referring to fructose, he said, when God put the poison on the earth, he put the antidote with it. And that's the fiber, okay? And, and so I'm paraphrasing his quote right here. But that means that if you eat a grape, it's completely different than you drink grape juice because the grape has fiber in it and the fiber actually makes a huge, huge difference passing the, the carbs through your system and not just purely spiking your insulin and spiking your, your blood sugar. Okay, so eating an apple, completely different thing than drinking apple juice, not to mention the fact that apple juice, orange juice, fruit juice has been pasteurized, it's been heated, which kills a lot of the vitamin content. So you think, you know, I'm eating this fruit when, you know, you're not getting anywhere near the same nutrient complexes and mineral density and things like that, that you get from eating an apple. Okay. And later we're going to talk about, you know, even, even watching the apple, you know, but for right now, eat the fruit. That's number two. Don't drink fruit juices and then start limiting even your fruit intake. You know, banana for breakfast, orange for lunch, apple for dinner is a lot of sugar. Uh, it really is, even with the fiber. So limiting your fruit is a big thing. But also, you know, that, that's sometimes at more advanced level. For a lot of people, if you switch from boxed or processed food for your kids over to real fresh fruit, you're making a huge, huge step in the right direction. Organic, non-GMO, you know, berries, uh, things like that. So great step there. Number three, the next step. Okay, so we're starting from the bottom, moving up to the more advanced levels. Once you've avoided any added sugars, once you limit your fruit intake and eliminate all the fruit juices or the, the you know, the soft drinks, especially, my gosh, th those should be, you know, that's number zero. And that's, uh, don't ever start that, or if you are, switch right away. But number three is limit or eliminate grains, okay? And grains, you know, I would say eliminate, but limit is the first step, okay? Remember, we're taking baby steps in the right direction. But first thing, limit your grains. Now, that's like white bread, white rice, white flour. Those are a no-no right from the beginning. Uh, but then whole wheat bread, whole wheat flour, whole wheat, you know, long grain rice, limit those Two, grains actually turn right to, to glucose, to blood glucose, right away. Your body converts most carbs into glucose, spikes your blood sugar. You can look at this and see, you can Google this, and they have compared, you know, we all know that, uh, you know, Coke or Pepsi, or most people know that that's really high in sugar. That's why I said that's number zero, get rid of those, those soft drinks. But you can look at this, and people have tested it. You could test it yourself. You can be fasting, eat a piece of wheat, bread. I'm not talking wonder bread. I'm talking wheat bread. And it will spike your blood sugar more than a full sugar Coke. A lot of people have run these studies. They've posted the charts on, on, on Google. You could do it on yourself too if you don't believe it. But wheat bread will spike your blood sugar more than a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi, which is insane. Those were known for being really high sugar, for destroying your teeth, for destroying your metabolism, for leading to obesity, et cetera, et cetera. And then wheat bread has the exact same effect. So limit or eliminate grains. You know, grains is something that to me, I just don't, don't eat, um, you know, 
I can't think of the last time that I had one. Oh, I went out to breakfast with somebody. I had a breakfast burrito. It was like eggs and pretty good stuff on the inside, eggs and peppers. But I just ate the breakfast burrito because I was out to eat with somebody. Normally, that's something that I just wouldn't do. First time in months, I'd say. Um, but yeah, limit or eliminate grains is a really important thing for not only your blood sugar, but your overall inflammation. So remember we said that blood sugar spikes inflammation, but also inflammation can be spiked by other things and it messes up insulin. You know, it basically messes up the post-service. Uh, it, it makes it less efficient when something else from the outside comes in and kind of messes with the systems, causes inflammation. Okay, so limit or eliminate grains. The next step, okay, this is a really big one too, limiting or eliminating grains, and it goes along with that, and your fruit intake is understand what's called the glycemic index and the glycemic load, okay? And, and I, this isn't a whole episode on this, so you might have to Google it. You might have to look for a chart. I'll put those in the show notes. I'll put a couple links. Har- Harvard has a really good one. Um, glycemic index versus glycemic load, understanding those. So I'm going to explain those really quickly. Uh, glycemic index is how quickly a food spikes your blood sugar or how much effect, you know, if you have one gram of a banana and you have one gram of an avocado, how quickly, how much are they going to spike your blood sugar quickly? You know, so it's comparing, you know, which one spikes your blood sugar more by weight, basically. So a gram of avocado versus a gram of banana, um, you know, the banana is going to spike it faster. But then the, uh, the, the, uh, the glycemic load is also massively important. So let me give you an example. Carrots. Carrots are very high glycemic index. They spike your blood sugar really quick. You know, a couple other ones that I'll just go through, you know, health-wise, potatoes are the worst. Okay, I mean, literally, they're the highest on the chart. Sweet potatoes are also really bad. Glycemic index uh, and load. Um, starchy, starchy veggies, you know, tend to be, of the health foods, tend to be pretty bad. Some of the, you know, breads and, and pastas and things like that are just absolutely horrible. That's why we're limiting or eliminating grains. Um, but so carrots, high glycemic index. That means that one gram of, of carrots is going to spike your blood sugar more than one gram of a lot of other things. But the glycemic load is massively important too. Carrots have a really low glycemic load, which means that in one carrot, they just don't have that many grams of carbs. So you'd have to eat, even though the glycemic index of a carrot might be higher than, you know, say, uh, an I don't know, some, some other fruit or vegetable, you'd have to eat a whole plate full of carrots. Does that make sense? So it's the total load. The index is how quickly it spikes it. If all foods had the same amount of carbs, the load takes into account how many carbs are in a serving size. So another example is, you know, a watermelon and a donut. Okay, a watermelon and a donut have about the same glycemic index. Okay, so a one gram of watermelon carbs would spike your blood sugar to the same number as one gram of donut carbs, which is crazy. But the watermelon and the donut, their glycemic load is not the same. If you eat one slice of watermelon, you're not getting near as many total grams of carbs as you're getting from a donut. So the donut has a much, much, much more effect on your overall blood sugar. So you have to understand these two concepts together, not just glycemic index, because glycemic index will, you know, uh, kind of demonize or criminalize something like a carrot. And, and and that's just not the case. You know, you'd have to eat so many stinking carrots to actually have a, a noticeable big effect on your blood sugar, because they just, there aren't a lot of, there's not a lot of load in a carrot. So you have to understand those two concepts of glycemic index and glycemic load. Number five steps. So number one, remember these are in order again. Uh, First, you have to avoid any added sugars. That's the beginner's level. The next level is limit your fruit intake and eliminate any fruit juices or, you know, soft drinks. Remember, we're number zero, so they're already eliminated. Number three, was limit or eliminate your grains, your breads, your pastas. I mean, get those things out of there, your tortillas, everything. Just get get them out of there. They're inflammatory. They spike your blood sugar. Number four, understand glycemic index and glycemic load. 
Okay, understand those concepts from what I just explained, but also go in and read and look at the charts and, and see how different foods compare. Know what you're putting in your body. Know what it's doing to your body. And number five, measure your sugar intake and your and or your blood sugar response. Okay, so when I mean your, measure your sugar intake, you know, look at your carb load. If you're doing something like a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet, high fat diet, you know, you have you have to measure your carb load. So right now I'm pretty specific with my carb load. I, I'm not a, you know, really detailed tinker, so I just have a general idea. I know that this morning, uh, you know, it's about lunchtime right now, but I know that today I've had less than five grams of net carbs. Okay, and so net carbs is you look at on a food label, you look at carbs minus fiber. Okay, so the fiber gets a free ride. So you look at carbs minus fiber. So that's why you can eat, you know, 10 servings of vegetables a day or 20 servings of vegetables a day and still be in ketosis, a ketogenic diet, a low carb diet, because those fiber grams get a free ride. So you got to look at that. So then, you know, you take, for example, you know, salad might have 100 grams of carbs, 80 grams of that salad might be fiber. So you're looking at 20 grams net carbs. Okay, so, it, you know, a lot of times you look at studies and they'll do a low carb diet and they're keeping people under like 160 grams of carbs, which is insane. I, I you know, that's four times the amount of carbs that I eat in a day. So on a ketogenic diet, you want to stay more like under 40, under 30. You know, we teach that uh, Dr. Pampa's 10 gram, 20 gram, 30 gram, 40 gram, 50 gram rule. But I'd say that I stay you know, without being super, you know, specific with it, under 30 to 40 grams a day of, of carbs. So that's one way is look at your carbs, measure how many you're taking in throughout the day, but then measure your, your blood sugar response. You know, like I talked about with the meter, get the precision extra meter. Follow, follow the link in the show notes. We'll put the Amazon link in there. We'll show you where we get our, where we get our strips, where we get our ketone strips. Uh, get the meter, measure it on a daily basis. And then have some of these labs done. You know, so this is something that, you know, if you get regular physicals, you, you've had before. You might just have to access them and call and ask. A lot of times we don't remember our lab values unless they're abnormal. So look at this. You know, look at your uh, serum glucose. You know, what was your glucose the last time that you were fasting? Was it in the 70s? Was it in the 80s? Was it, you know, that which is really good. Was it in the 100s? Was it in the 130s, you know, which is diabetic? Look at your HbA1c. A normal reference for that is between 4.8 and 5.6. Uh, so if you have that number in front of you, you know 5.7 and above is pre-diabetic. 6.4 and above is diabetic. You know we see you know people come in in the eights, nines, you know, really high numbers. That's a three-month average. So you can drop that. You know, in 90 days, get that retested. You can drop that. It's not overnight because it's a three-month average, but you can definitely drop that. The, the, the last one that I would suggest getting checked, you know, along with those, that's how, you know, most physicals might diagnose you as, as diabetic or not. Is your blood sugar over 125 and is your A1C over uh, that number? Um, and, and, but what I would say that you need to look at also is a marker called insulin resistance. Okay, and that's not uh, tested very often is insulin resistance, but it's probably the best test that we can have. You know, rather than say uh, how many packages are coming into the post office and how, like, you know, rather than just say count, counting the packages that are coming in or looking at over the last three months, you know, how many packages have come in and how good of a job have we done, this really measures the efficiency of the post office. How many of these packages are getting to where they need to go on time every day? That's insulin resistance. Remember, that's insulin's job. Are you doing a good job or not? Okay, so when you look at insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity, you know, it's measured on a scale of like, you know, 25 to, to you know, I've never seen anything in the hundreds. High is over, you know, 63. So low is below 27. Uh, middle of the pack, 50th percentile, 45 or high above 63. So I've seen markers on, on, on both ends. A lot of our younger, you know, patients, they tend to be pretty low. Their insulin resistance is still really, really good. You start looking at people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and their insulin resistance gets worse and worse and worse and worse because as you just keep feeding your body blood sugar, not over the days, not over the weeks, but over the months and the years, 
your insulin resistance just gets tired, it gets worn down, your post-service just starts working a little bit less and a little bit less efficiently. So every once in a while, you've got to go in and you've got to give, give them a holiday, right? Give them a break. Give your post-service a break. Give your insulin a break. Drop that blood sugar. You know, do a 30-day uh, you know, low-carb diet, really low-carb, high-fat diet. Do a ketogenic diet. Start doing in, intermittent fasting or do a fast. That, I mean, that's, a, that's the quickest way to improve blood sugar sensitivity. You know, you think, oh my gosh, I'm going to get so hungry. Well, you know, what if I put you on a deserted island? Would you die? I mean, yeah, eventually. Would you die tomorrow? No. Would you die next week? No. Would you die the week after that? No, if you had water. You know, you, you, your body's going to survive. It has survival mechanisms. So every once in a while, you want to trigger those mechanisms and let your blood sugar kind of readapt. It's just like giving, you know, a, a weekend or a holiday to the post service. You work them seven days a week like slaves. They're going to burn out. And that's what happens with your insulin resistance. That leads to faster aging, that leads to brain aging, that leads to weight gain, that leads to arthritis, that leads to inflammation, that leads to diabetes, that leads to obesity and metabolic syndrome and heart disease. Okay, that's everything. So this is the number one most important thing that you can do is implement those five steps. If you already do a a pretty good job with step number one and step number two, you're moved on to step number three. If you're already good with your grains, then you need to understand the glycemic index and and load. And if you already do a pretty good job of one through four, start measuring it. Because maybe you're like me, you know, I had a really healthy diet, I would say. Um, And and I do, but I've been pretty surprised with some of my numbers. So start measuring and start looking at this. That's the only way that you're ever really going to know. So once again, this is The Real Health Podcast. Dr. Taylor Crick signing off on, on what may be one of our most important episodes ever. So, so make sure you take this to heart. Make sure you check the show notes. Make sure that you check the links that we're going to provide and continue to learn about this. The number one most important thing you can do for longevity, for aging, for brain health, and for real health overall. Thanks. And we'll talk next time. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.